Hey YouTubers, good morning, it's Rob Moffitt. Guys, I've been making videos for about a 12 years, one video a week or more, close to 800 videos, and all that time I've only got one video on firearms about this baby. I made this a video on this high point 9mm carbine about five years ago, and it's one of the most popular and well liked and well received videos I've ever done. And, and the interesting thing about it is I'm a complete novice guns. This was the first firearm I ever purchased and the gun community was very receptive. They liked the video a lot. I went over all the reasons I liked and disliked the gun for the purposes uh, initially of uh, home self-defense. That was the reason I purchased it and I gave my reasons why and the logic behind it. And the people really liked it. In fact, they asked me to make more gun videos. and. I'm not a gun person. The next video I made <laughs> was how to make a gun case with a jigsaw. I had more fun <laughs> in that video. You should check it out. I'll leave links below. In fact, I have a playlist on BB guns and then and uh, and the, the high point. But recently, I purchased another pistol, another gun firearm, and uh, I wanted to start the video off by once again saying I'm a novice. This is the first. This is the first pistol I've ever purchased, I've ever owned. And so I'm doing a video on it with no credibility and no experience or expertise. But I did a lot of study and research. This wasn't for home self-defense. This was because this was always, in, in my mind, one of the coolest guns or the, uh, style of guns I've ever seen. It has a little flip-up barrel and it just tickles me whenever I see it. I've always enjoyed these. I've always wanted one. The Beretta, this is a design copied from the Beretta. So uh, this video is about 18 reasons I like <laughs> this pistol and about 10 reasons you may not like it. Also I'm going to go over uh, common problems people have had with the pistol and show how it's possible a lot of the problems people are having may be with the owner and not the pistol itself. Also discuss some issues that may be specific to this pistol that's not the owner. There may be some issues, just like everything manufactured is going to have some flaw. Well, there may be a flaw or two. We're going to be talking about that. I'll also go over the little options, not the little uh, uh, accessories you can purchase. Not too many. They're very inexpensive. You can get. It's been a, been a pleasure. I've enjoyed it. So uh, it's going to be 18 reasons I like the pistol. 10, not so good. Let you make up your own mind. But coming from the viewpoint of a novice, not an expert. An expert is way up here. <laughs> I'm down here. But I, I read everything I could. I watched every single video on YouTube. In fact, I have a playlist now of all the videos I liked about the pistol that I, I put on the playlist. I, I watched the videos. I, I, I read forums. I read all the comments. Actually, you can get a ton of information from the comments on people's videos about subjects. People never give enough credit to the people who comment on YouTube. That's a big part of the community on YouTube, not just the content creators. So I, I, I've talked to people and then I purchased it and I, I, I shot it several times at the range and uh, I, I, want, I went last week, the last time, just to make sure I was happy with it and the ammo was working good. Out of over 200 rounds, I had one failure to eject in the very early part of the shooting, like maybe the first third or fourth magazine. So let's get started. We'll talk about the reasons why. And I uh, hope you like this video as well as the video I made about the high point. This isn't a gun channel. It's not going to become a gun channel, especially since YouTube seems to demonetize all of the gun stuff. They didn't monetize a lot of my BB gun stuff. But um, I, I really enjoy the pistol and I thought it'd be fun to show why I like it. Oh, one last thing before we get started, down at the bottom of the video, you can see a little round circle like a wheel. If you go there, you can open it up and adjust the speed of the video. So this is going to be a long video, and I've been talking a lot already, so you can speed up, and I won't be offended. <laughs> you can make me talk really fast, or if you if you want to, you could make me talk slow. <laughs> All right, let's go. Let's watch the video now. Okay, everybody, good morning. We're going to be talking about the reasons I like the pistol and don't like the pistol. By the way, it's unloaded. The first 
first thing I like about this pistol is that the, the ammo is cheap. I purchased this ammo. I got this from Bud Shop. This is the CCI Mini Mag. I'm using the target. It's about 12, 35 feet per second. It's the copper plated round nose. I reviewed as much information as I could find about the different ammo that worked and didn't work with the pistol. And most people seem to agree that this was one of several that seemed to work quite a bit. I, I saw one person said they didn't have good luck with this, but everybody else did. So I purchased it and I had one uh, failure to eject during the early part of my shooting. And I think it might have even been because when I was holding it, I took a video of me shooting it and I could t tell my hand was up against the slide. So maybe I was keeping the slide from moving back because when the pistol is brand new, the spring is very strong and the parts are very tight. So you uh, don't want to uh, hinder the slide from moving back at all and ejecting your round. And that may have been my fault, but I got a stove pipe and uh, that other than that, and over 200 rounds, I didn't have a single failure to feed. These are the copper plated round nose and they cost about six cents a piece. I've been very happy. The next thing is the warranty. There's a, a limited lifetime warranty with Taurus. You, uh, you do have to pay shipping to them and I think you have to pay shipping back. I'm not quite sure. Also, you want to call them before sending anything to them because I think they've changed their location. I don't think their, their uh, parts and repair are in Miami anymore. I think they moved to another state. The accuracy of the pistol, a lot of people that I read said this was a very accurate pistol. I'm not a very good shooter with, I'm a good shooter with BB guns and pellet guns, but I'm new to firearms and I'm, I still am not as accurate as I would like to be compared to with BB guns and pellet pistols. But at f between 15 and 20 feet, I can hit something like the size of a coconut. <laughs> uh, but the thing is with, with a, a pellet gun there, I can hit something the size of an orange, you know. So, but other people say this is very accurate. I, I also know people say they can't hit the side of a barn with it. I, I don't think the pistol is a problem. I think it's myself. I think I need to improve more. And I'm going to show you one of the uh, targets that I used at the range. And I'll show you the progression, how I did get better over the shooting. Um, I, I don't think this is an inaccurate pistol. Uh, but it is a very short barrel. Uh, and you have a very long trigger. So that's not a good combination. <laughs> Arsenal, I've been told. The fourth thing is it has zero recoil. There is there is no recoil. I've uh, I have read reviews that people said, well, after they shot like a hundred rounds or something, there there's fingers hurt or whatever. I, this is <laughs> there's nothing to it. In fact. I was holding it so lightly because that's how I shoot the the air pistols, the BB guns. I think that might have been some problems with my accuracy earlier uh, because there is no recoil. You can just hold it lightly, and that's not good. Um, number five, people don't mention this very often, but I think one of the features that is positive is it's very... It's not intimidating compared to a lot of other pistols. And for someone who is a new shooter or new to guns and firearms, you, uh, I think everybody knows someone who wants to get the biggest, largest, baddest, most powerful pistol out there. And even then, they're not satisfied. They want something bigger or stronger. Where there, there is to the reverse. There are some people who want the least <laughs> powerful required to do the job. They're just, they're just not that crazy about uh, a gun. So this is... A really good pistol I think to start people off on because the more I use it the more friendly and, and little 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 guy it's 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 a handy little gadget I I, I mean it's a firearm it's not a gadget but you know what I'm saying it's it's not intimidating it, it's a little cricket number six is my personal my personal favorite is it has the flip up 
I don't know why that makes me smile, but every time I, I see that, it just, I think it's hilarious. <laughs> Number seven is it has the manual safety. I looked at a lot of other pistols before I did this one. There's, I wanted something very small and something that would fit in a pocket. And many of the other pistols that would fit in my pocket did not have a manual safety. They had uh, the trigger that was supposed to be a safety. But I, I <laughs> I'm a coward. I wanted something if I was going to stick in my pocket that I could put a safety on. I mean, it's still loaded. It's still a firearm. But but I wanted every every. Uh, benefit I could get on my side of the story. I didn't want a, a gun in my pocket that I could put my hand on a trigger or something and it'd go off. It just, I'm a coward. There aren't too many pistols of this size that do have the, the manual uh, safety. Number eight is there is no reason to rack the slide if it's not malfunctioning and you do not need to rack the slide. We'll talk about that in a minute. But you obviously just put your, your cartridge in there and shut it, and you're good to go. It's a blowback design. It uh, goes back and ejects the uh, cartridge casing, and then it will, as it comes back, pick up the next cartridge and put it into the chamber. It's a wonderful design. If you, if you have arthritis or you have difficulty with your hands, not having to pull the, the uh, slide back it is very handy. Number nine, a lot of people that I saw online hated this feature. It's a trigger lock. I thought it was kind of cool, and I have to actually take my hat off to Taurus. I like having another option. I don't see uh, why I would need it in my case, but if you have the possibility of unauthorized people taking access and using your firearm by using this lock, I couldn't find my key. I don't know where my box is. Uh, but you have a little key and you turn it clockwise and well first of all the, the directions say you have to make sure there's no cartridge in your chamber and then it says to remove your magazine make sure it's empty and put it back in and then use your key to uh, turn this little uh, button clockwise until it pops up and you'll hear a click, and that will engage your uh, uh, lock mechanism. However, in the next paragraph it says, never engage your lock with the tilt-up barrel up. So it said it can permanently damage your pistol. So they, they need to make that more clear if you're following step by step, because the next step says, make sure that's shut. So if you're locking your pistol make sure your barrel is empty but make sure the tip up is closed it also says make sure your cartridge or your magazine is empty but once you lock it it says you can disengage your magazine and, and separate your magazine from the pistol I'm assuming then you could also load it and keep it separate so when you needed to use it you just unlock and then insert your magazine um, but I think it's good to have an extra feature, uh, a lock like that. I, 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 people say, oh, well, that's something else to break. And you can actually destroy your pistol by if you do something wrong. But, but I, I just know, I think safety first. Number 10, I like that it's stainless steel. Um, I know some of the earlier designs had wood and so on, but I'm a big fan of stainless steel. Living in the subtropics with all the moisture and humidity, stuff rust at the, at the you know, by looking at it, it just, it's, it's really handy. It's going to last a long time. Number 11, it, it's not that noisy. It's not quiet, obviously, but, but compared to, uh, if you go to the range and you, you put a 100, 200 rounds through this, is, you're going to be using ear protection, but still, you're not going <laughs> to, it's not going to beat you to death with the noise. If somebody, I go sometimes to the range and the people next to me shooting a cannon, and I tell you, it, it makes my heart jiggle. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> yeah, this is one of the, least powerful calibers you're going to get. Number 12, it's easy to take apart and clean. I cannot recommend this more highly. Look how easy this is to take apart. You just took it apart. So there's no excuse not to clean it or maintain it. Uh, this is all you're, you're not going to take this apart inside. This is all you're going to take apart. And 
to uh, put it back on. You're, there's little ears here, and this part here goes under the ears. And since it's empty and the safety's on, I depress the trigger just a tiny bit and it helps it go in. I also depress the trigger, trigger a tiny bit to help it come off. But it's so easy to do. There's no excuse not to clean this pistol or maintain it. And if you ever have a malfunction, you can open and close this and, re and put it back on blindfolded. It's, it's a wonderful, beautiful design. I think so, anyway. The grip. The grip is beautiful. I know I read several reviews of people who purchase pistols that are smaller, like the 25 caliber, like the Seacamp, which is an amazing little pistol. But it's very, very thin, very tiny. And people remark how thin it is and how easy it is to put it in your pocket, whatever. But then, they in the next paragraph, the first thing they do is they go out and they buy a grip to make it more bulky so it's more comfortable to hold. There's no need to buy anything. This is, you could if you wanted to, but this this is a pleasant uh, pistol to hold. Um, there's there's no need to, to buy extra things for your grip for this pistol. It's a little bit thicker, but I found when people have too thin, they go and make them thicker anyway after they're done buying them. Number 14, if you get a failure to fire, you can have a double strike with this. You can strike again. And uh, that could happen a lot with a 22 caliber. Number 15, the more I use it, the more I like it, the more I see it's well machined, well made. I found one place on the pistol earlier. Right here, there's some wear on the pistol um, from firing. But before I started firing it, there was a tiny bit of the coating coming off the metal except for that one part right there and i looked over every part you know with the magnifying glass almost i couldn't find anything that didn't look really well made i was happy um it's for for the money this is a very nicely made pistol and taurus doesn't have a very good reputation uh the more i use it uh, the more i like this pistol the more i have respect for the company number 16 as you saw earlier in the video, it's, it, it'll fit in any pocket. Front pocket, back pocket, side pocket, your shirt pocket. If you got a big shirt pocket, you can put it in your boot, put it in your hat. <laughs> uh, it's, a, it's a nice little pistol. There are smaller pistols. The 25 calibers I've seen are smaller. But, uh, and obviously Derringers and stuff. But, but uh, it's very small, easy to carry. And I live where it's hot and you don't have big bulky clothes so if you needed a gun to carry this is the gun to have because no one would know you have it with you where the other guns they're going to tell well some of them uh, a lot of them except for some of the really small ones they're going to tell you have a pistol if you just have on short pants and a, and a small shirt you know you're, you're going not going to have any place to hide it so you want something like this if you're going to be carrying but then again, we'll get into the caliber. That's a lot of people wouldn't have it because of the caliber. They wouldn't carry it. But <sighs> Number 17, the reason I like it, it's just a wonderful, simple design and has fewer parts than some other pistols. So that's, for me, the less parts there are, the better. The less there is to break. Um, and once again, I just, I'm in love with the simple design, how easy it is to take apart. The last number, number 18, it's just fun. <laughs> Taking it to the range and shooting, it's just, it's just a pleasure. Uh, unless someone in the, is right next to me shooting a cannon. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's, it's, been, it's been a blast. I've been having a lot of fun with it and I recommend it. The negatives. <laughs> oh Lord. I read a lot of people when they purchased this gun they said that they could not pull the slide back. And I thought to myself, these people must be a bunch of sissies. You know, I said, they have to be exaggerating. And I tried pulling it back when I got it. I could eventually, but I almost tore all the skin off of my fingers and thumbs. It, uh, but I found out the more I used it and shot it, the more it loosened up and the easier it was to pull back. Also, I found out you need to make sure it's completely void of any grease or oil. 
and after you clean it, it's going to be oily and you're going to have residue on your hand. My hand should be pretty clean. Let's see. Okay. You can do it if, but your hand has to be completely dry and free of oil and there has to be no oil here. You can purchase grip tape to go over this, but you'll ruin the design. You won't be able to see it anymore, but you'll be able to operate your slides should you ever need to. Because there may come a time, let's say you have another magazine and put it in there, you won't be able to uh, have enough time to put another uh, cartridge in here for to, to, to uh, start for you. So you'll want to pull it back. And if you can't pull it back, let's say you went and had some some food at the, and you're having a greasy hamburger or something and now your hands are sliding. It's, it's not going to be pleasant, guys. So, uh, yeah, you, you don't normally have the ability to pull this back unless it has been used a few times and loosened up and your hands are dry and free of oil and this is free of all oil. And it, even then it's not going to be easy. Um, it could be a safety feature though. You could, you could leave, you could leave this empty and that way nobody in the house could, could operate the slide. They wouldn't be able to shoot it. <laughs> It'd be another safety feature. Um, number two reason not to like the pistol. It uses a very small, low power caliber cartridge, a 22. And a lot of people, um, debate this till the cows come home about the effectiveness of a 22 compared to other larger calibers, which I'm not going to get involved in that. Um, this was just something fun for me. I wasn't going to be defending a bridge against an advancing army or a, <laughs> a bunch of mobsters or, you know, I, I just, this was just something fun, but, uh, people may use it for, for self-defense, but it is a 22, uh, I, my personal belief is, uh, which is based on almost zero experience and knowledge on the subject, is that uh, your shot placement is very important, as is actually having one on your person. Uh, I think a lot of guns are so big, people would not carry them with them. The third reason not to like it is the ammo. Once again, it's not related to the pistol, it's just the... the the caliber that it is rated in. The 22, because it's rimfire, it has a history of, of not being reliable. I found that this particular ammo was very reliable. Um, I'm going to stick with it. The round nose, copper plated, uh, CCI mini mag, 40 grain. You want to find what works in your pistol. Um, there seems to be a lot of the different opinions about what works and doesn't work. I think part of that is related to the fact that the pistol has a very strong spring and it's very uh, tightly fit parts in the beginning. So you need a lot of power to push the slide back. And some people in the beginning may be using a lower power uh, ammo. It's important that you don't use too high of an ammo. People are using the stingers that have uh, much higher than this. This is 1235, which is, I think, as close to what um, a person should be using. You don't want to use the, the more high velocity ammo because it can uh, damage the parts of your pistol. And I think that's some problem people have been having. But uh, in the beginning, it is tight. And if you have something that's too low power, it may not be able to push your slide back as far. That's my theory, and I'm sticking to it. But I, I've been happy with the Mini Mag uh, 40 grain target. Number four is uh, several people indicated their magazines were defective, and they were able to fix them by putting a very small O ring around the magazine. That way it would take up some slack because what was happening is the cartridges, the, the am, ammunition wasn't feeding properly because the, there was a tiny bit of slack in uh, uh, the, the magazine and it wasn't a 
feeding the animal properly. And by putting the O-ring around it, they were able to solve that problem. And more than a few people mentioned it. But I think the newer m magazines and designs of the pistol have uh, alleviated that problem because I haven't seen anybody lately mentioning that was an issue with the newer model. This is the poly. It's a stainless steel poly. Another negative about the pistol is because it it does have very small parts. Um, it's it's not as robust as a larger pistol, which would have less tighter tolerances. Um, you can have some other pistols that <laughs> you can shake them and they can move around, and they still fire fine. Where when you have something that's very small and tiny. All of your parts have to be small and tiny, and there's no room for error. So the smaller the pistol is, the more difficult it is to manufacture something's really good quality. But it is what it is. Number six, there's no rail or any place to attach a laser, which I would love to have. I've been thinking about adding something to the side here. I've added lasers to my BB guns and my pellet pistols in their blast. I would love to have a laser with this, uh, you, even maybe on the trigger guard, but ideally on something on the side below here would be cool. Um, it's just so much fun, not even to aim, just use your your laser and just plink away and get right on the target. Um, but you can't do that with this yet anyway. Number seven, <laughs> this is when you have this pistol and use it, then you're out and the uh, firearm world, people are going to look down their nose at you. Um, you're going to be low man on the totem pole. Um, there's not much love given to this pistol by people who are uh, shooting next to you with a desert eagle. <laughs> uh, I just tell people I wanted something that was small and light that would fit in my pocket that was easy to throw. And it fits the bill for me, guys. So <laughs> I I don't care about low status. I have a blast with the pistol. It's fun. It's reliable. And uh, I can't ask for much more. Number eight. I don't know this personally, but I have read where people said because of the gun, it's very tiny, the parts are small. The people who are gunsmiths don't particularly care to work on these. And uh, in some of the forums where people did things that would void the warranty and they worked on them and messed around with them. They mentioned they're a little bit tricky to uh, to hack and, and, and alter the function and so on. Um, not that I'm recommending that, but but it's not as easy a pistol to, to modify as some others are, which is not an issue for me at all, but I thought I'd mention it. So this is something I hesitate to mention because I don't know if it's accurate or not, but I saw several people mention that there was a part. I think it's part number 26, which is a plastic insert, which I couldn't locate. Maybe they've changed it to metal. I don't, I'm don't. i not quite sure where it's located. Or I think I know, but I don't see it when I open the pistol. And uh, they said after three to 500 uh, rounds, you have the tendency for that part to wear out, which may have been for some of the older models because I don't see a plastic part where the diagram, the schematic says it's located. So I, I'm confused on that particular number. I'd like for people to write in the comments what their opinion is or what the scoop, the, uh, what the, the, what the story is on that. If there is a part in here that wears out after like so many rounds and you have to have it replaced or replace it yourself. Um, I wasn't able to get clear on that. I should have called the company before I did the video. But uh, I wasn't able to locate that part. I didn't see anything plastic. Maybe they've changed it to metal. So those were the negatives. Now, uh, I did see, well, some people made videos about problems where they were having. And I'll go over the ones that I think that could be also related to the user and ones that may just be related to the pistol. Ones that I think can be related to the pistol is after reviewing some of the videos, it could be they were using cheap ammo or the wrong ammo, let's say a very high uh, strength uh, cartridge like the Stingers, or uh, they didn't clean their gun, or they were just holding it wrong. 
Um, like I said earlier, when I was initially using my pistol, I may have had some of my fingers or thumb against the slide. And uh, there's other ways you can hold it like too lightly. If you don't hold it for firmly enough, you're not going to be very accurate, uh, which is new to me uh, with the BB pistols and, and uh, pellet pistols I'm used to using. The grip, it wasn't a big deal as far as the strength and so on. Um, so there are issues that aren't to be blamed on the pistol that could be blamed. For for instance, the, the dirty gun. I watched one video. The guy was saying, this is a jam -o -matic. It's a jam -o -matic. And then the very next video down in the comments he wrote for her, he cleaned the pistol and then magically it started working okay. So he's not sure what happened. Um, <laughs> the 22, I think, is kind of a dirty cartridge. It, it, it's, it, it, uh, I don't think it's that clean of a... Is there really a clean bullet? I'm not sure. Someone mentioned it. They said, well, the 22 is a dirty cartridge. I, I don't know any that are clean, uh, but but I, like I said, I'm new at this. So, But if if you don't clean it, <laughs> you may not get the results you, you expect. There are other issues that I'm not quite sure what's going on. A few people mentioned that it started firing on its own after they, they, they let off a round. It continued to discharge. And uh, I did watch a video where someone claimed that was happening, but when it's watched in slow motion, he's you can see him pulling his finger on the trigger, so I don't understand. But but more than a few people said they sent their... I take that back. I think two people said something about sending their pistol back because it was firing on its own. I don't know why that would happen, but it's something to think about. Um, I mentioned how some people have had to put an O-ring on their their magazine. Also, some people have had the button that discharges the magazine fall out. There's a little screw set on the other side. You can see if it's coming loose. Also, that pin <clears throat> right here. A few people have mentioned over time the pin loosens and you have to uh, re-secure it. You could probably use Loctite and that would take care of it. Um, a few people to solve some problems were they were cleaning and polishing the feed ramp right there and they said that was something that helped but those are some of the issues people mentioned go over real quick some of the little accessories you can get I'll leave links to them on Amazon you can get a grip tape which I don't have in my box If you were worried about this not being able to pull, uh, you can get the cleaning oil, you can get the uh, lubricating oil, you can get a speed loader for your magazine. However, I found out after buying the speed loader, you can just put a paper clip in the hole here and push it down. Also, some people were buying uh, little snap caps to keep the, the pistol from being damaged when you were dry firing it. But I found these little drywall anchors work fine and they're very inexpensive, and that way you can pull. I'll show you the length of the pistol trigger. It's rather long. Oh, you can't fire the pistol without the cartridge. And once again, empty. See, it's kind of long. You can also purchase plastic rounds in case you were uh, wanting to, to do some adjustments or, or check out any feed issues. You could put plastic rounds into your magazine. Uh, I've yet to buy a holster, um, but I'll leave some that people recommended for me. And uh, I saw someone that had a laser tool you could actually add to the barrel of the pistol and you would be able to take shots with your pistol and it would register on some device, electronic device, so you could see when you're on target. It looked rather interesting. So that's my video for the little Taurus PT-22. Or I think this is the PLYS-22, the, the uh, poly stainless. It's uh, been a fun pistol. I, uh, I don't recommend you use it for shooting bears. <laughs> uh, but if you want something fun at the range, and if you use the right 
ammo seems to be pretty reliable. I, I recommend it. I, I'm, I have a playlist of other videos that I liked about the pistol you might want to check out. I hope you uh, enjoyed the video, and I'm going to look forward to reading the comments people leave about the pistol and their experiences with it and where any errors I've made so we can correct them. And I uh, hope this will be a resource for other people who either have one of these pistols or are interested in purchasing one. All right, guys, it's been a pleasure. I've really <laughs> been looking forward to doing this video. And uh, I put new stuff on every week, but I probably won't have many firearm pistols because you just get them demonetized. It's not really worth it, but it's, it's fun to do, guys. Um, so check out the Taurus and check out the other stuff I have on the channel. All right, guys, take care. See you out there. Okay, guys, this is one of the uh, targets from the last outing at the range. I'm not anxious to show this to you because you'll see how poorly I shoot. Uh, but I, I numbered these per magazine. Like this was number magazine number four. And you, I was like between five and seven yards, between 15 and 20 feet. So number four magazine, like four, 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 four. And then there's a four somewhere over here. The uh, the last one I did, number nine, I did one in the center, and there was a nine, 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 nine. So you can see I'm I'm not too far off, uh, but there were some like down here, number six. I'm high to high to the to the to the left. Same here, high with number eights, high to the left at uh, 15 to 20 feet. Um, this is about the size of a coconut, and it, the coconut would have got hit. <laughs> and uh, everything would have got hit with, with one of the bullets from, from the, uh, the magazine. But you can see I, I need more practice. I need to be better. With a, with a BB gun or a uh, uh, air pistol, I, I could be in here um, at 15 to 20 feet where with the the 22 pistol I'm out here so I need to be a little better but but the people who say that it's not accurate uh, I'm not an accurate shooter and I'm a novice at, at pistols so uh, at, at firearms anyway and and this is the results I was getting with the pistol with that ammo um, so hope that something helps you out Remember to take the foam plugs out of your ears when you take these off and don't go to Walmart. Although they don't notice at Walmart. <laughs> Ask me how I know. <laughs>